Great, thanks, Raleigh. Can everyone hear me okay? Great. First of all, I'd like to do a little poll for the audience in this room. Uh, Yana's going to put up a poll, and I want to find out how many people trade uh, Nadex uh, right now. Okay, please take time just to click yes or no so I can get a sense for familiarity with Nadex. Okay, the no is slightly more than yes. So we have about 40% of our people on board that trade Nadex and 59 that don't. 60% don't. All right, that gives me a good handle on things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this thing out with an introduction to what Nadex binary options are. I'm going to spend about 15 minutes doing that, giving you Nadex in a nutshell. Then from 6.15 to 7, Crystal is going to cover some of the strategies that she follows in her room, and one of them is really, really good, highly consistent in the afternoon with the pound dollar and euro dollar um, currency pairs. Then when she's done, uh, from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock Eastern Time, I'm going to talk about some simple directional strategies that I use on Nadex uh, on the uh, Nikkei, DAX, FTSE 100, and S&P 500 indices. And I'll show you how my trading plan is set up for the day. So let's get started. <clears throat> First, the trading disclaimer. Um, trading binary options involves risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. You should carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances, knowledge, and financial resources. And always remember that past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Also, a live trading room disclaimer. We're going to be trading um, the live markets with Nadex. These are going to be done in a demo account because Nadex has asked us to do that. It's part of their uh, end user agreement, and we like to honor that and keep them happy. But the information that we publish is educational in nature and is designed to contribute to your overall understanding of, of how I use technical analysis to trade Nadex binary options and Nadex spreads. I am in no way recommending the purchase, sale, or short sale of any securities, options, futures, or other financial instruments. I'm not a financial advisor or registered analyst. I do not offer my trading ideas as recommendations for you to copy. These trading ideas represent my own opinions and are intended to demonstrate my style of short-term trading. I am also in no way representing that similar results will be achieved by following my ideas. Trading Nadex binary options and Nadex spreads can involve substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. You should carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances, knowledge, and financial resources as you may lose all of your initial investment. Okay, we've got that out of the way. A little bit about myself. I'm a partner relationship manager with Trading Pub. And what I'm responsible for doing is engaging with authors, speakers, and presenters and aligning them with projects that we do on a monthly basis. We do ebooks, on demand videos, e magazines for active traders with top quality content from the best experts in stocks, options, futures, Forex, and Nadex. I'm also the author of a monthly newsletter called The Probability Report, which is um, full of uh, a calendar of Nadex news and events as well as feature articles and videos. I author a personal blog called The Inquisitive Trader, and I'm also a contributor for a blog on Nadex's website that has just been launched. <clears throat> OK, so what is Nadex in a nutshell? When you trade Nadex binary options or Nadex spreads, you are making a decision about the direction of a market relative to a strike price that you've chosen within a defined time period of your choosing. You're seeing where the market is relative to one price point, and you are taking a look at where the, where the market will settle by, a time, by an expiration time that you've chosen, whether it's five minutes, 20 minutes, hourly, daily, or weekly. Nadex binary options have been called yes or no trades. Each trade has a maximum value of $100 per contract traded, which means the absolute most you can win or lose is $100 per contract. You always know what your maximum risk is and your maximum reward is before you trade. So trades can't run away from you. And what you're doing, like any other trading decision, whether it's 
stocks or futures or Forex, you're making a decision about what the likely direction of a major index commodity or Forex pair is going to be relative to a strike price within a defined period of time. As long as the trade is active within that defined period of time, you cannot get stopped out. It's a live trade until expiration time. And you can hold your trade until expiration, or you can exit a trade early to preserve profit or to minimize loss. So let's go for an example of a binary option. Let's say it's 12 o'clock noon and you like to trade gold. And the current price of gold is 1254 and it's on an uptrend, it's climbing. You have a high probability strategy that you like to use for trading gold futures. And all of your indicators and your strategy agrees that gold is going to be on an uptrend and you do not believe that gold will close below 1250 when the pits close. If you believe that gold is going to close above 1250 and the market's currently at 1254 and it's 12 o'clock noon, the market's probably going to agree with that proposition and determine that there's a 70% chance that that's going to happen. And if that happens, under this example, you'd be risking $70 to make $30 on a high probability trade. Now let's assume that gold is trading at it's noon and it's 1200 is gold's at 1254 and it's currently riding an uptrend but you sense a reversal. Things are starting to turn around and you believe when the pits close gold is actually going to settle below 1250. If that happens the market currently thinks there's a 30% chance that's going to be happening. Gold's on an uptrend, but you believe differently. In that event You'd be placing what they call an out-of-the-money trade. The market doesn't agree with you. You're going to risk $30 to make a maximum of $70 on a lower probability trade. Nadex is the North American Derivatives Exchange. They are a wholly owned subsidiary of the IG Group, which is listed on the FTSE 100 Index in London. It's based in Chicago, and it's subject to strict regulatory oversight by the CFTC. You don't use a broker when you trade with Nadex. Your orders are played, placed directly on the exchange. Your member funds when you make a deposit are <clears throat> held in a segregated bank account. And uh, it's very easy to deposit and withdraw funds. There's full transparency on every trade. Nadex doesn't take market positions. You're not trading against the house. What they're doing as an exchange is facilitating a transaction between a buyer and a seller of an opinion on where the market's going to be within a defined period of time. Nadex was previously only available to legal residents of the United States, Canada, Mexico, and U.S. territories. It is now expanded and operating in 47 countries across the world. So when you place a Nadex binary options trades, everything starts with your opinion on where a market is heading. And there are lots of markets you can choose from, including Forex pairs, popular Forex pairs, stock indices, commodities. commodities. And then what you want to do is select the, uh, the asset that you want to trade. Your next step is, what's your expiration? What is your time frame for expiration? Do you want to um, take a trade that expires at the close of business on Friday at the end of the week? Do you want it to be a, a trade that closes at the end of the day? Do you want it to expire on an hourly basis, or a 20-minute, or a 5-minute basis? It, everyone has a different uh, trading style, and there are expirations that are suited to your trading style. Then you want to determine if you want to buy or sell. How many contracts do I want to sell? Each contract is some portion of $100, or, or, or a total of $100. You want to determine how many contracts you want to trade, what price you're willing to pay for the contract, whether you're buying or selling. And once you've done that, you place your order directly on the exchange. Once again, there are no brokers. You can close your position early and preserve profit or minimize loss, or you can let your binary um, option expire. Um, with Nadex, you can open up a two-week demo account for free. It's going to be funded with $25,000 in play money. And if you like what you hear from this presentation, we're going to give you links on where to, um, uh, to uh, download a demo. 
The minimum funding for a live Natix account is only $100. And the exchange fees, there are no brokers, there are no broker commissions, but exchange, Natix makes its money by charging exchange fees, which are $0.90 cents per contract per side. Um, the maximum exchange fees per side is $9, or 10 contracts. So a round trip on 10 successful contracts would be $18. But if you traded 20 contracts, you, it would still be $18, and 50 contracts, $18, and so on and so forth. So your, your exchange fees are capped at $18, regardless of how many contracts you trade over 10 contracts. If a contract expires unsuccessfully or out of the money, you lose on the trade, you're going to be charged the execution fee that you um, for placing the trade, but you're not charged for the order settlement fee, which is a pretty nice feature of Nadex. Quick sum a quick uh, summary on Nadex. Um, binary options are basically a yes or no proposition on the market. It's where you believe the marketplace is going to settle in a defined time period relative to a strike price. You have limited trade risk. You always know your risk reward before you place a trade. You have multiple markets that you can trade from popular Forex pairs to futures, uh, indices, commodities. You have spike protection. You can trade throughout that period without fear of being stopped out. And finally, it's a regulated exchange. Navex is regulated and subject to strict oversight by the CFTC. Your funds are held in a segregated account, and it's easy to with, but with deposit and withdraw. So I'm going to uh, take give you a quick look at Nadex, what the platform looks like, and I'm going to pass it over to Crystal. So this is this is what this is what your data, your Nadex demo account looks like. It's very easy to navigate. You've got um, in the upper left-hand corner, you have your finder, and in your finder, you have the list of all your indices from the Hang Sengs, the FTSE, uh, German DAX, Nikkei, uh, S&P 500, NASDAQ, Russell, uh, Dow, uh, Forex, 10 currency pairs, um, major commodities, copper, corn, crude oil, gold, natural gas, soybeans, silver. There's even uh, binaries you can do on Bitcoin and uh, underlying news events. Um, the middle part up here is basically your watch list. You can take a look at various um, uh, assets that are, that are currently available, the bid offer spread up here. Um, and then when you want to take a look at anything, like the, I'm just going to go with the euro dollar right now, and seven, at 7 p.m., expiration. I'll pull up the chart really quickly. And it's pulling up a five-minute chart. Um, if you like to, to pop in indicators, there's plenty of things you can put in there. If you like things like the Ichimoku cloud, it'll paint that in and give you that information. MACD, moving averages, stochastics, Bollinger Bands, whatever type of indicators you like to use. Many of them are available on Nadex. So with that being said, I'm going to pull out of this right now, and I'm going to pass it over to uh, Crystal. A couple, but before I do that, just a couple quick Nadex resources. Um, first of all, you can go to tradingpub.com slash demo, and that, and you, that will um, activate your, um, your uh, Nadex account. Click on that. And it's super easy to open up a demo, by the way. I'm clicking on that page. Um, all you have to do is create a demo name, first name, last name, phone number, and email address, and you'll have a two-week demo for, um, for trading Nadex for $25,000 in play money. Um, I do a lot of writing and a lot of blogging on strategies for trading Nadex. And when you go to trading, when you go to, um, I didn't want that. When you go to tradingpub.com, we have a, um, an area dedicated to Nadex education. So this is the Trading Pub website. Go down to Nadex. 
And what you'll wind up seeing is a ton of blog articles, videos on Nadex. I also have my trading plan up, up here, and it's uh, on page two now in here. So all of the plans, some of the, that I talk about tonight, in my third quarter trading plan. Um, probability report is something that kind of goes out once a month. It gives you a free calendar of all Nadex free educational uh, webinars that are that Nadex uh, sponsors. Trading Pub also put out a book called um, Trading Made Simple: Strategies at Risk Less Than $100, and you can download that. Crystal is one of the authors in there, and I've got a chapter as well as several other uh, authors. And you can get that compliments of Trading Pub. And then finally, Nadex has just opened uh, up an educational blog. And I'm publishing columns uh, on that particular blog on Monday and Wednesday. So with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Crystal. All right. Can you guys hear me? <clears throat> I can hear you just fine. Everyone else? All right, so I'm going to bring up my desktop here. Okay, can you guys see my screen okay? All right, awesome. Okay, what I'm going to go over today is the, um, the afternoon delights. And if any of you um, follow my blog or some of my Facebook posts, I uh, posted... I think it was about a week or two ago that you can also take this trade with the um, the Euro USD as well. Um, so it's it's a really um, great daily trade to take, um, and all it's based on is I, I look at the 15 minute chart and let's see here. It's odd. The MACD, okay, it's it's based on the MACD crossover, and the only rules to the strategy really are are one that you're looking for a crossover on the MACD, and that is here, okay, and you're looking for this this crossover to occur. Um, today is actually the the first day in in a long time um think about a good month and a half or so that i've seen where the strategy is is probably going to lose um both on the euro dollar and the um, um gbp usd so this is the gbp usd here this chart and the crossover occurred oh, let's see here right around oops, 115 Okay, and what I've found um, recently is that, or over the past couple months, is that you can wait until like 3 or 4 p.m. to even enter this trade. Sometimes it does get away from you. Um, sometimes you need to enter right when the cross occurs, but um, many times you don't have to. Um, today would have been a great day just to wait, and uh, today was a day that I did not. <laughs> so um, you're, you're more than likely going to see it lose today. But basically what you're doing is you're looking at, okay, we've been in an uptrend throughout the day. That's occurring. Um, it is showing that it's, it's going to be a sell. And it did go down for a little bit. Um, it did reach a take profit, um, not very much. I think about 10 per contract. But um, as you can see, we went into the afternoon right around like 2:45, 3, 3:15. Sometimes you'll see um, price uh, the the price move. Um, then it goes from around, you know, like after 12, 1, 2 o'clock. Um, and a lot of the time it will go in your favor. Um, that's why sometimes you need to enter right when that cross occurs. But um, sometimes it won't, okay? Usually you're still, you're still perfectly fine. But um, what I did today was I entered a sell at 1.56800 on the GU. 
and on the EU, I entered a 1.1200 cell as well. Um, and as you can see, that afternoon volume kind of picked up and it went against the trade. So um, that's, that's one thing you want to be careful of, but this is a very high probability trade that normally wins. Um, and I mean, you can pretty much just set it and forget it. You don't even need to worry about it. Um, it's one that I don't usually set a take profit on at all. Uh, I just I just let it go. I enter the trade and I don't come back to the computer. So um, <clears throat> I, I also found, which is very interesting, that you can enter two times. I, I called it just a double entry. You can enter a buy and a sell on the EU and GU, and it's when a second cross occurs. Okay, so the first one occurred to the downside. The second one is occurring to the upside, okay, and you would choose when, excuse me, the first one occurred here, so you'd choose a sell on that candle, um, at the high of that candle, and you'd choose a buy at the low of this candle. I did not do that today. Um, I probably should have, it would have uh, minimized losses, but I did grab a second uh, sell on the EU at 1.1240, so um, <clears throat> that will at least uh, help to minimize the loss. Um, so let me show you, if we scroll back here, my computer keeps kind of freezing up, I'm really sorry guys. Um, we've been taking this trade in the, the slick trade room every day this week, and it's been a great one. Um, we got some good entries, I think $30 and $40 profit uh, per contract. Um, let's see. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it just keeps freezing. It's not letting me move. Um, Right here, you have your first cross. It's after 12 o'clock, and I'm not sure if I, I said this earlier, but you choose a 7 p.m. expiry, okay? And um, you would choose at the low of this candle here, which was 1.56400, okay? As you can see, it was a clear winner. Um, and we had a second cross right there. Um, we had a second cross here. Um, we did not enter this this cross, but um, it was another one that would have um, a great example of the the double entry. Um, you could have done a sell off of the high of this candle. So around, let me just do it on the candle here. Uh, 1.56875. So if there was price, um, I suggest choosing twenty dollars profit, um, twenty to thirty. Okay, if you're going to set a working order, that's what I a lot of the time will put in the room. If there isn't any price on the entry of one of these, then um, just set a working order for twenty to thirty dollars or better um, profit per contract. And a lot of the time it will fill because it will um, kind of <clears throat> excuse me, it will kind of test the price. All right, in this in this scenario, it really didn't. Um, but you'll see if you if you kind of back test this strategy um, over time that a lot of the time you'll get some very good entries to these. Sometimes you'll even get like an OTM. Um, but if you just set a working order, I would suggest uh, twenty to thirty. And uh, I'll show you guys a few more examples here. That'll let me move my charts. OK, 
Okay, so here, um, after 12 o'clock, we had a cross. It wasn't very much of a cross, okay? It kind of tested along here. Um, but if you entered right when it occurred, You would have chosen the low. Okay, so right around there, 1.56589. And um, at... Okay, so here we go. Um, it would have expired in the money, but very, very, very close. Okay. Um, I know that we did enter this, so I, I believe that the the strike was was lower than that. But or available on Nadex, but again, um, you could have entered a buy there. There was no double entry that day, so you would have only had one one trade off of that. Um, and like I said, this is on the GU. The same thing happens with the the euro euro dollar as well, though. Um, my suggestion is, especially with today's trade, um, if you just if you just wait until like 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for your entry, even if you don't get the best price, um, you know, that's that's okay. Um, it, you, it's better to be safe than sorry, you know. Since there isn't much movement in the afternoon, um, this is a pretty safe trade. It's also a, a very safe one to, to only, you know, set a, a working order for, you know, like 80-20 to um to take profit because it wins a very high high percentage of the time um but that's that's basically it um it's pretty easy i know some of you have had some questions about it and i know um one of you asked earlier if if you could ask any questions um I haven't hedged against it. Um, like in today's scenario, I did see a, let's see, on the euro dollar, my original entry was 1.200 uh, for a sell. And then we had that afternoon volume pickup. Um, it, it's, I highly doubt it's going to expire in the money. So I grabbed a 1.1240. So just the next, the next strike up. And I had set a working order for 20 on that, and it did fill. I think it went up to like 2150 or or something like that. So that helps to minimize the loss there. Um, I have never actually hedged it though. Um, James, um, I just do a like if it's a a sell, then I would set it for 20 to 30 or better. If I'm if I'm sitting at the chart, sometimes I'll just watch it. Um, if I'm entering a buy, I would do like 70 or 80. So you're, you're risking you're risking 70 or 80 to make your 20 or 30 dollars profit. You know, Crystal, if I can chime in for a sec, one of the things that I found that was really interesting about this trade when I first heard about it was how the market tends to really quiet down after four o'clock. You know, if there's like a MACD crossover and it's going one way or the other, to me it's almost like the market just runs out of energy and it just drifts towards the finish line in which, in whatever direction you decide to buy or sell. Today was just weird. I and mean, I think a lot of the economic news going over in Europe was uh, pretty crazy stuff, but the markets were chaotic today. And I don't normally see that on the uh, pound dollar or the euro dollar in the late afternoon. I, I was saying that uh, that yeah, um, you know, normally because price really doesn't move, you know, in the afternoon. Usually, you're you're good to enter uh, right when that first cross does occur. Um, I you know, it's very strange. I I know I took a few trades earlier as well, um, and they 
they just didn't set up like they normally do, and usually they're very high probability trades. So today was a is an overall losing day, unfortunately, but um, we do have to experience those sometimes, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah, because this thing, this particular trade, I took a look at it back in, in July, and I followed every single day, and whenever a crossover occurred, it was like 17 out of 20 trading days, it held beautifully. So, you know, today's just one of those days where the market was definitely squirrely. Yep, definitely. So, um, Crystal, just while we're, while we're at it, this particular trade... So it doesn't look like it's working out. How is it looking out on your charts right now? Is it still going against you? or? Let's see. So for the, the GU, I entered 1.5680. So, uh, you know, it's it's going to the downside a bit, but um, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens on that. The euro dollar... Okay, so I did a second entry when price kind of increased here um, at the uh, 1.1240 to help minimize the loss. Um, and that one, you know, is, is looking fine. But the original entry I did at uh, 1.120. So that one is also looking like it's it will expire out. You entered it uh, today at all, Cam? In fact, I entered it on the cross, and I saw that thing started to go against me and betray me, and I just exited. It. I, I exited immediately. Very good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was the that spike there right around. Which is so unusual, and I saw it, and I said, you know, normally this, this market flattens out, and it just didn't do it. It spiked, and I said, okay, this is unusual behavior. Time to get out of the trade. Yeah, it really is. You know, and, and like I said, you know, sometimes it does get tested, but, you know, it, it just makes for a little bit better entry-wise, but, you know, it usually likes like that in the afternoon. And I, I checked the yeah. um, the news and everything, yeah. you know, there wasn't anything around that time um, that I saw, so I know there was news earlier in the day, but usually that's not, you know, a, a, a factor with this with this trade in particular so so rob asked what the expiry time frame oh. options are for the afternoon tonight oh, the expiry time um uh 7 p.m eastern standard time and crystal are there any other strategies that you follow during the day that you found to be pretty effective um i wanted to show you guys um some lunch trades that i've been taking you can take them on the um us 500 um the us 500 the um, small cap, Wall Street, and the U.S. tech. Um, and I base it on the MOBO indicator on Thinkorswim. But unfortunately, every time I tried to bring up Thinkorswim, when, I've, when we've been in this webinar, it uh, keeps locking everything up. That's what originally locked me up earlier. So I don't want to... Um, to lose um, uh, out of the you know out of the webinar again because it would have to reload. But basically, what I look at is the from eleven to twelve. Okay, let me just write this down real quick. Eleven to twelve o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you take a look at all four of those charts and you set your time frame to fifteen minute charts. Or you, well, I guess you you could also set it to you know the hourly to to see the high and the low, but um, I usually leave mine at 15 minutes, and I just draw in the high and the low, and whatever direction the MOBO indicator is showing, um, from 11 to 12, as long as it's showing you know only a buy or only a sell, um, I if it's if it's showing a sell, 
I enter a cell at the high from 11 to 12. If it's showing a, a buy, then I enter a buy at the low from 11 to 12 for each one of those indices. And um, it works really, really well. Um, I've been... Is, is 12 your expiration of, time, 12 or time or what? Uh, 1 p.m. is the expiration. And I, I'm just looking at the high and the low from 11 to 12. Um, so it's it's a really great one. It's I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, I don't change any of the settings in the MOBO. It's the MOBO basic indicator. And um, Type it in the chat for all of you. Mobile basic and 11 to 12. I low. 1 p.m. expiry. And this is all Eastern Standard Time. And I don't change any of those, um, any of those settings. Are you talking about one to twelve? Yes, yes, one PM expiration. Um, but I'm looking at the eleven to twelve um, high and low, and also the direction of the MOBO. Uh, and yes, it's the FW MOBO basic. I enter the trade. Um, I wait until until twelve o'clock. And sometimes there won't be a price, um, but the, um, like I said, like with the afternoon delight, um, with, with any trade really that I, that I do take that's a high probability, I just set a working order. Um, I usually set it for 20 to $30 um, profit um, per contract. So if it was if it's set up for a a buy, um, you know I'd set it for seventy to eighty, and um, if it's a sell, I'd set it for uh, twenty to thirty. I uh, set to fifteen minute time frame. I want to show you guys some examples, but like I said, it's not, um, my, my finger swim keeps freezing up on me. So I can, uh, I'll write a note to, to do a post on it. Um, so you guys can, can check it out, back test it. And small cap. So Crystal, while you're doing this, can you describe a day at Slick Trade? Yeah, definitely. We, we have, uh, we, we try to offer different strategies and we also have uh, some expert advisors for people that trade during all different time frames. Um, some, some work, some, you know, have to work during like the New York session. So they, they kind of miss out on, um, on some good setups when, you know, when price is moving. So they're looking for something that evening or, um, or vice versa. So what we do is we try to, to offer a lot of different um, strategies and um, and our main focus is to to teach people. Um, that's why I created Slick Trade to begin with. Um, it was just to to just teach people about Nadex and Forex. Um, we we have a, a live trading room where we call trades. Um, there's Bill Hayden and myself. Bill and Hayden call Forex trades, and I call Nadex, and I also do some. Um, weekly forex trades um, like I'll do a prediction and analysis on Fridays and let people know what to look for on Sunday or Monday um, and the best time to to enter those trades based on um, uh, an expert advisor that we use or a strategy that we use um, Bill and Hayden they have uh, weekly forex trades they put out on Sunday and then on um, uh, the evenings uh, usually after 6 p.m. or so Eastern uh, Bill will post some uh, daily limit orders for Forex. And then I just post um, uh, Nadex trades throughout the day. Um, I've been working on a, a couple ATM, OTM strategies um, that I'm looking forward to release next week. 
and um, and then we also call like the the afternoon delights um, and the the lunch trades um, and then anything else that I that I see that sets up um, but uh, the main focus is to to teach and for for people to learn and really know how to how to trade the market um, we provide like a trading journal and um, and a uh, a trading plan. So if you know if your account is only five hundred dollars, you know here's here's some things to to shoot for. You know um, when you reach a certain balance, go ahead and go up to to two contracts. You know um, per you know per trade, and um, and you know do it conservatively. Don't be don't be aggressive. Just watch it um, build up over time. Um, if you're someone with already a larger trading account, um, you can you know go based off of whatever your account balance is. And um, we do have um, some members in the room that are very aggressive traders, and then we have some that are more conservative, like myself. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we have going on. I have video tutorials. I like to do um, weekly videos. Uh, anything new that I learn, I like to put out there. Um, you know, things like that, so. Um, that's as far as your your question do I have to have 100 per trade minimum or can it be less if you're only trading one one contract per trade that you take um, it, it would depend on well, I mean, it would, it would really depend on your your account balance, um, and it would depend on if you're trading like an in the money, at the money, or out out of the money um, trade. Um, like I said, most of ours, you're you're risking seventy or eighty to make twenty or thirty. Um, next week, I'll be releasing some some ATMs and OTMs, but I you know I I like to stick to the at least 20 or 30 profit per contract. Thank you for posting the link, Yana. And Mike, yes, there is a cost for joining Slick Trade. It is, um, I believe, 147 per month. And that that's uh, that includes everything. That includes our our setups, our trading calls for forex and nadex, um, and all of you know the um, training material, videos, you know everything. Welcome. And what's the rock and Renko and in Picasso model? Um, the Rock and Ranko is is based on price action. We use um, Ranko bars and a a setup. Um, it's it's it works best when it's a, an active market. So I'd say if you're a you know night or late late night trader, um, like for the London session, um, it would work really well for you. And the New York session. I usually use it during the New York. Um, it has a very low risk if you trade it conservatively. Um, if you're more of an aggressive trader that's you know looking for um, a lot larger profits, um, you know you can you can use it that way as well. Um, but I like to, like I said, offer strategies that that also work for people that trade more conservatively, like myself. Um, I'd rather just stay consistent in profit than, you know, try and 
risk more and, <laughs> you know, not, not get out of a trade and then it go against me horribly. So, um, the, the pop in Picasso, um, that is, it's also an expert advisor. Um, I don't use it as an expert advisor personally. I like to use it for my weekly analysis on Fridays. Um, that's actually the strategy that I use um, and record and show everyone, um, you know, what to look for on Sunday and Monday um, and when to enter the trades. Um, it works well for um, Forex. And the Rock and Renko works well for Forex and Nadex, um, Nadex OTMs um, in particular, and um, and then just Forex in, in general as well. Um, and for the people that are in this room, do you have a special offer? That are in this room, do you have a special offer? Um, we don't have anything out at the moment, but if you, um, like we don't, usually we have like a, a coupon code. Um, there isn't one that's active right now, but for anyone watching, if you, if you write support, I can let them know if you'd like a 15% discount, um, on your membership. Um, they can, you can send it a support ticket and they can honor that for, I don't know, let's say the next month or so. <laughs> so nine nine twenty. It's good until then. <laughs> we can create a coupon code and everything and um have them get that over to you. So Well Crystal, I've been following the afternoon delight well, strategy following. since yeah. around yeah. February. Well, and well, I've I've just been amazed at how I've, consistent I've it is. It's one of the bread and butter trades that I well, make every day. Butter. Yes, definitely. I absolutely love it. It's my, my highest uh, overall profit per month <laughs> uh, trade that I take. Um, there are very, very few losses. Um, and like I said, for the past you know month and a half, I haven't even experienced one loss uh, until today. So, <laughs> But nothing is 100%. <laughs> well, that's funny because last month when we did a live last event, uh, one live of my never-lose uh, strategies I lost. You know, it happens when you're presenting live. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, today, I mean, like you said, it was just very, very odd, you know. Um, sometimes in that, you know, in that afternoon, like I said, after, you know, right around 3, 2.33, you know, you'll see a little bit more volume, but today was a really crazy <laughs> spike there. <laughs> it's not uh, not normal conditions whatsoever for it. So, Are there any final comments you'd like to talk about, Crystal? Oh, my microphone are, are turned off any, again. I'm sorry. Are, are, <laughs> any, any final questions for Bob, Crystal? Um, Bob, you can join at um, slicktrade.net. I may say your name wrong, but Nala. The Euro JPY, I have not been taking that as much lately. It was acting really strange, I want to say about a week ago. That used to be one of my favorite trades to take, but it's just been, um, hasn't been as accurate lately. So I have, I have not been taking that one. Um, I've, I've definitely been watching it, but yeah, it just hasn't been as, um, as accurate. Well, um, basically, Rich, uh, over time, Actually, I can't remember. Can you remember, Cam, last month what just the afternoon delight itself brought in? I know it was over 300 per contract for for July. I want to say like 320, yeah, when it was, 360. Yeah. It was like a little over 500 like, if you traded one contract every day. Over 500? Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's, I mean, basically. Assuming you were risking around time, $20, like, uh -huh. 20 to 30. Yeah. And basically, I mean, if you're taking. If you're taking only one contract, uh, you're not going to have as as much profit over the month, but uh, you can slowly build that up. Sorry, like if, if, if you take, you know, five five contracts, if, if you made, you know, $500 profit per contract, you times that by five, you're looking at a little more profit per month. Um, you know, you just slowly build up your account if you don't have a large account already. And um, once you build it up to a larger account, then uh, you can start taking a lot more contracts uh, per trade. Roger asks, what stock indices would you suggest starting with? For the, the lunch trades, 
in general, I guess I'm going to be covering a few indices when I, in my, yeah, in fact, this is a good segue. Um, Chris has covered the afternoon delight, and unfortunately, it just didn't behave today. But the markets were crazy. And what I'm going to do is take over now and, um, and uh, show you a couple of the things that I look at throughout the day. So, Crystal, thank you so much for spending the last 45 minutes with us and letting people know about your uh, your service. You're welcome. It's no problem. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to see if my monitor loads. And, folks, you should be seeing a trading pub screen can everyone see the screen okay just type in yes okay good just to let you know just to recap uh, crystals uh, presentation on the afternoon delight if you go to tradingpub.com under free education down to nadex and load up our nadex blog I put a post, it's one of the recent ones on here. Uh, let's see. Two, yeah, on the first page, two consecutive days of the afternoon delight trading strategy. You'll find a full written recap of how that strategy works, along with a video of Crystal explaining that particular strategy. So. You can always get refreshed just by going to uh, Trading Pub and reading up on it on our uh, Nadex blog. Okay. <clears throat> so, anyway, that was Crystal, and she's CEO of Slick Trade, and she does Nadex and Forex education, author of several strategies. The website, again, is slicktrade.net, and she covered today the afternoon delight trading strategy for the pound dollar and euro dollar. Now, a little bit about my trading plan. Once again, I'm Cam White, and I'm kind of the Nadex trading guru at uh, Trading Pub. I trade a small account. I funded it originally with less than $1,000. I've got a daily trading goal of $100 in profits. And when I trade, I make sure that I never risk more than 5% of my account balance at any given time. I always test new strategies at least 20 times in demo before I go live. And earlier on, I used to actually test 40 times before I went live. And basically what I want to do when I'm testing strategies is I'm looking for patterns that repeat themselves. And I want, a, I want the, probab the probability of success on the strategy to always be greater than the risk or reward that I apply to that strategy. So, you know, I don't have a problem risking $80 to make $20 as long as I know that I have an 85, 95% or better success rate of that, of that strategy winning. If I'm going to risk 70 to make 30, I need to know that I have an 80 to 85% greater success rate for that particular strategy that's documented. If I'm risking 60 uh, to make 40, I need to have a 70 to 75% uh, success rate, and so on. And my trading plan is divided through time periods throughout the day. Hang on just a second. I need to blow this up a little bit. Sorry about that. I was in a different mode. OK, so you've got my, my trading plan. My, play, my trading strategies typically start at 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time. From 7 to 9, I have something I call the Strudel strategy. It deals with the uh, Germany 30 DAX index. From 9 to 11, I've got the FTSE 100 brunch strategy. Uh, from 11 to 1, I've got the Pastrami strategy on the US 500. From 1 to 7, that's where I keep my eye on Crystal's afternoon delight strategy. From 8 to 10, I've got the, the uh, Nikkei Kanpai strategy. And then on uh, special days, like Wednesday and Thursday, I like to trade uh, out-of-the-money trades on crude oil and natural gas news. Um, my trading plan is posted on the Nadex section in tradingpub.com. But when I look across the day, I've got a full day of uh, trading opportunities. 
to um, to reach my uh, my trading goal. And I do it using in the money, at the money, and out of the money strategies for each particular um, for for each particular trade. So this is the Kunpai strategy. Um, it actually is going to start in about an hour from now, but I'll tell you how I set up for it. And if you have a Nadex demo account, if you currently trade Nadex, you'll know how to trade it when I'm done. And if you've decided to um, get a demo uh, of Nadex, it's a great strategy to try from 8 to 10 Eastern time. It's highly consistent. Currently, the pattern that I, that I, that I spotted on this is repeating itself about 90% of the time. Um, and it gives me multiple trading opportunities. So what I do is it starts, the, the, the compile strategy starts at 8 o'clock Eastern time. First thing I do is I check the economic calendar. I, I prefer investing.com, others like Forex Factory, but I want to make sure there isn't any news uh, affecting, um, that could be affecting um, the Asian session. I'll take a look at the historical daily, four hour, hourly, five, 15 minute, five minutes charts to see what that, that market is doing going into the eight o'clock hour. Is it trending up or is it trending down? The indicators that I like to use are the um, eight exponential moving average. I call it the T line. I use the uh, simple uh, 50, the 50 and 200 simple moving averages. Slow stochastic set at 1233. And those give me the, those are the indicators that I like to use. I might also toss in a MACD if I. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Nadex and I'm going to choose the 8 to 10 p.m. time frame for the Japan 225 index. That's the Nikkei. And it's a really simple strategy. This is going to apply to many other strategies I trade throughout the day, but I call it a controlling candlestick. What you're going to do is you're going to watch the 8 p.m. hourly candlestick. You're going to set the charts on hourly to begin with. And you're just, as soon as 8 o'clock hits, you're going to watch that candlestick develop. And once you are absolutely convinced in your mind that that um, hourly candlestick is going to end up bullish or bearish, that's when you're going to make your decision. The key to that sometimes is patience because it can take almost an hour for um, uh, an hourly candlestick to actually prove that it's going to be bullish or bearish. Sometimes they whip back and forth. Once you're convinced that the, uh, the APM hourly candlestick is bullish, then you want to buy the Japan 225, selecting the first Nadex strike price below the opening price of the candlestick. So you want to buy from below the, 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 the developed candle. If it's bearish, you want to sell from above that hourly candle. And then place an order, a working order, that, that suits your risk-reward preferences. Lately, I've been using 70%, uh, where I risk um, $70 to make $30 for an in-the-money trade on those. And if the market is on a strong up or down trend, I'm also going to consider an out-of-the-money strike on that. As soon as I know it is taken off, I'll, I'll try to see if I can risk $20 to make $80. So here are the past four days of the um, of the strategy. Uh, yesterday, um, I'm going to grab a little pointer here. Get a pen utility. Okay. So yesterday we had this candle right here. It was very bearish closed bearish. So the rules of this strategy with an, for, for an in-the-money trade would be to trade from a book, would be to sell from above this developed candle and, and what you're going to find out is that about 90% of the time when you backtest this, the, the following hourly candle will not challenge the strike price. So if your strike price was right here, this candlestick did not threaten that strike price. 90% of the time that pattern holds up. Yesterday, on the other hand, it lost. So we had a bullish candle that triggers a buy from below, 
Strike price was right about there. The second hour closed below that. That was a loser. The next one here was a doji. It was a do it was a bearish doji. The sell was above. The following hour, the following hourly candlestick did not challenge that. That's a winner. And then in this particular case, we have a decent bullish candlestick. You would you would buy from underneath that. And the second hour did not come. The second hour did not threaten that. So, those, so that's a winner. Just to give you an idea of how many times this pattern repeats itself, over the past 33 trading days that I've that I've actually put some really tight records on this particular strategy, this pattern has held up 30 out of 33 days. That means this one loss here was one of those three times that the pattern got violated. And to me, that gives you a lot of information. If you know that you have a 90% probability that the marketplace is going to move in one direction or the other, that's a binary decision in my mind. So it's what you do with that information that can help you make trades, whether it's at the money, in the money, or out of the money. Let me clean up this mess here. Okay, so then I'm going to move on to actually, yes, I'm going to drill down on this this trade that, that happened yesterday. And, oh, baby. Here we go. So here was yesterday's trade. And let me just grab my little pen again. So this line here on the left, that's where the trade begins. It's 8 o'clock and I have a vertical line where the trade ends. That's expiration. So the market started right up here. And it ground its way downward. And it's looking like a sell. It pulls back up. It starts coming back down. And right here, just before the end of the first hour, I had determined that this hourly candlestick was likely to be bearish. It's time to sell. Now, the first strike that price that Nadex offered was right up here, where this line is, at 20090. And the market is so far below that as a sell that I'd probably have to risk like 90 to make 10. And I just don't like doing that. So what I did was I placed a working order. I amended the ticket, and I decided to risk 70 to make 30. So that's a working order. It's going to sit in a queue until the market comes up high enough to make a market for that order. In this case, it didn't happen, but I had it out there as my working in the money trade. But the market was starting to show a downtrend. So I also played placed an active out of the money trade right here. So right at this point where I made my decision, I placed a trade way down here selling the market. So, so the market is way above that. And the marketplace determined that there was only a 20% chance that it would make it to this point by expiration. I took that. So I'm risking 20 to make 20, 25 to make just 79, 75. Just call it risking 20 to make 80. And the market ground down. And it's looking pretty good. In fact, right at this point right here, I could have taken, I could have started picking up profit. I would think I was up about, I think I was up about 20 at this point. And, and I was like, oh man, it's on a, such a nice downtrend though. Let's see how much more it's got. There was a bunch of indicators indicating that it was going to continue going on a few time frames. What does it do? It shoots right back up. Now it's not looking so good, but I've only got $20 rest. And then in the last half hour, the marketplace turned right back and ultimately exited in, in the money. So I wound up not getting this trade up here. It never filled. But this one here was a big winner and yielded an uh, $80 profit on $20 rest. So I try to look at this, you know, the, once again, the first hour in this trade was all about determining the, the likely direction of, the, uh, of this market in the first hour. 
as soon as I'm convinced, which, which for me was right about here, that the marketplace was going to be bearish, that's when I made, that was my trigger to sell the market above for an in the money or below for an out of the money. And it wound up being pretty good. So that's risking 20 to make um, $80. If I risked 10 contracts, I would have been risking 200 to make $800. So that is the, um, the, the strategy in a nutshell. The first hour, you, you basically wait until you're convinced about the direction of, of where the market's going to go. That determines whether you're going to buy or sell. And then your next hour, most of the time, if you, you know, if you can get in, if you can get the trade about 90% of the time, it will expire in the money. And this strategy I've been following for a couple of months now, um, but it's based upon a strategy I've been trading over a year that just doesn't feel me does not feel me very often. Okay, so that is the that is the um, the Japanese strategy. It's from eight o'clock to ten o'clock, and the rules are just to wait for the first hour to develop. In the morning at seven o'clock uh, Eastern time, from seven to nine, I've got the strudel strategy, the exact same strategy. It's if uh, I, I get on at seven o'clock in the morning, I check my economic news, I see what's in the way. But 90% of the time, the 7 a.m. hourly candlestick controls the 8 a.m. Uh, uh, candlestick. And what I mean by that is that the, 7, the 8 a.m. candlestick does not threaten the opening price or the strike price below, the, uh, below or above the 7 a.m. candlestick, depending on whether I'm buying or, uh, or selling. So as long as I know that, what I've been doing is I'll place it in the money, working order, risking 70 to make 30. Maybe the marketplace will retrace and fill me. Maybe it doesn't. And if, if the marketplace looks like it's been like it's got some momentum, like it's been happening a lot lately, um, this morning, for example, you know, the um, S&P 500 took a dive from the opening bell. Well, well, the DAX has a tendency to move in the same direction as the S&P 500, and I saw a beautiful out-of-the-money opportunity risking, um, I had one trade risking um, uh, 20 to make 80, another one risking 10 to make 90, and, you know, the market just blew through those, those out-of-the-money trades, and the, and the ones that were in the money never filled. Um, so from 7 to 9, I've got the Strudel strategy, it's on the DAX market, and you know, you can use that information any way you want, but uh, you, can, you can stay conservative and stay on the winning side of the trade with an in the money. You may or may not get filled. You can go for an at the money if you feel really strong about the direction and risk 50 to make 50. Or you can choose an out of the money. And, you know, one of the things I think about with strategies like this, and I'm just going to back up for a second to a previous slide. Let's go back to this trade right here. This, oops. Okay, this trade didn't work. It was an in the money trade, but I was risking 70 to make 30. So my profit target right up here was $30. And it took a $70 risk. Oftentimes when I'm dealing with out of the monies, it's not about seeing if that thing is going to cross the finish line in the money, giving me $80. If my target was $30, and the marketplace grounds down, grinds down to this point, not to the finish line, but to right here, and it's offering me $30, what was my original goal? It was $30 per contract. I might decide to take profit right here, and get out because there's no guarantee that it's going to finish below the line. That's, that's, taking the, that's taking the money that I budgeted to make on that particular trade and getting out of the market while I'm ahead. 
In this particular case, by the, by the way, I won it by exactly one pip. That's a little close for comfort, but then again, I was only risking $20, so I'm not, I'm not sweating like crazy on a trade like that. If, if I'm risking $80 and a trade threatens me, my heart rate goes up. I'm going to stop and see if there are any questions. Is this making sense? Can everyone hear me? Okay, any questions while I'm going through this? Is this, I mean, is it, okay. Linda says, just love the out of the, uh, out of money trades. Kevin, hey, Kevin, says, here you can. Just join the room. Would you be going over this? Uh, Abner, this whole session is being recorded. So yes, you'll be able to uh, to review it, but I'm gonna I'll I'll, I'll go after, over a couple of points uh, on this as I wrap up today. <clears throat> so we have the strudel strategy that runs from seven o'clock to nine o'clock in the morning, then from nine o'clock to eleven. I've got a brunch strategy with the FTSE 100. Guess what? It's the same strategy as the Strudel and the Nikkei. You choose the 9 to 11 uh, Nadex time period on the FTSE 100 index. And if the 9 a.m. candlestick is bullish, I'm going to buy from below the uh, hourly candlestick. If it's bearish, I sell from above it. And um, once again, you apply the risk reward that it's best suits your preference. You can place an out of the money. I also got it. I place an in the money trade that didn't fill today on that particular um, asset, and I place an out of the money that, that traded. So this morning, you know, I had actually reached my profit goal by the by the by the by the by the, by the second trade of the day. Um, two out of the monies came in beautifully, along with one in the money. Then from 11 to 1 p.m. I've got the pastrami strategy that, you know, it's lunchtime in New York. And when I think of New York and I think of New York delis, and when I think of New York delis, I think of pastrami on rye. So, you know, people have actually been kidding because a lot of my, kidding me because a lot of my strategies have food names attached to it. Honestly, I just throw those little nicknames out there so I can remember what strategy I'm talking about. But people are starting to accuse me of uh, my strategies are, are, are responsible for them gaining weight. It's the same as the other two strategies. It, the strudel is from 7 to 9. The footsie brunch strategy is from 9 to 11. Pastrami is from 11 to 1. They go right into each other, which is pretty cool because that if you were risking this $50 or $60 or whatever, you're never risking more than that from trade to trade. You're just rolling one into the next trade, into the next trade. And all of these patterns have 80% or better chance of, of, of occurring. So with a pastrami strategy, you want to um, you want to uh, conf you want to you want to go on to the uh, S&P 500 of the U.S. 500 index, and you're going to watch the 11 o'clock hourly candle develop. If it's bullish, you buy from below it. For an, for an, for an in the money, if, if it's bearish, you buy above it, and then you can make some decisions about at the money. Or in or or in the or, or out of the money trades, the most important thing to me about all of these sort of controlling candle trades is that with that information and with the probability of the of the market moving one direction or the other, that's a very binary decision to me, and it's what you do with that information that determines how successful you are with this strategy. So a summary just on Nadex really quickly, and I'm going to jump back into the in, in, into the Nadex platform, and I'll sort of review where we have been today. The Nikkei strategy won't be up yet because that that, that doesn't come online until about the next 20, 30 minutes. But Nadex binary options can give you a trading edge. I mean, you can um, you can make trades outside of nor normal market trading hours. Your risk is 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 capped. You can never have a trade run away from me, from you. 
Um, you know, I think when the when the Swiss franc decoupled itself from the euro, I mean that sent a shock wave. I mean the market's place spiked. It, it it ran through stop losses. People lost fortunes if they were on the wrong side of the trade, and that just can't happen with Natix. A trade cannot get past you. I mean, as you're always dealing with you're dealing with a spread or, or or with a binary option a defined floor and a defined ceiling and you can always scale up the number of contracts you want to uh to to um be best adjusted to your risk reward you can see the trades through expiration or you can get out early you can open up an account for as little as a hundred dollars as long as the trade's live you can't get stopped out and uh, the Nate, the Nadex uh, charts, the platform, everything that that, that Nadex has for you to use is free of charge, and uh, it's trading now. And uh, Nadex is now available in 47 countries. And once again, to get your uh, demo for Nadex, uh, just go to tradingpub.com/demo, and you will be loaded up with a um, two-week uh, uh, free demo account. And then when that's done, if you find, if you decide you like this thing and the strategies are working for you, and you fund the account. Just let uh just let us know at Trading Pub. Yana can send send an email to support at tradingpub.com, and Yana will be make will be sure to mail you a library of additional um, resources. Okay, let me clean that up. Right of this. And I'm going to go back to Nadex, and I'm just going to do a couple things. The Japan, the, the, I'm going to go to the Japan market. It's showing me that I don't, that my time frame isn't available on dailies, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to pull up the weekly chart, and I'm going to kind of give you a little bit more history on why I like this particular trade so much. I'm going to move from the five minute to the hourly charts, and the second. The, the the second candlestick is the ten is the eight o'clock um, Easter bar. So you can see. Now let me get my pointer back up. Okay, you can see that. Oops, wrong one. You can see that the. That candlestick is controlling this candlestick. The day before, this candlestick developed bullish. It was a buy. Second candlestick reversed. It was just trust me on this. It was actually below the strike price. That was a that was a loss. So this is a win. That's a loss. The next day, we had a. Doji, but the strike price was right there. It was a sell. It was a very weak, bearish Doji, very Doji. That wound up being okay, so that was good. Next day, bullish, so you would sell, you would buy from below. And once again, the marketplace didn't come down and threaten that strike price, so that one was good. Oops. Let's go through a few more days of this, and I'm going to jump to some other markets. Okay. Bullish. 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 Bullish, big bear. That's a huge loss right there. That was one of the three losses over the last 33 days. Yeah, I'll go a little bit further. This one here was bearish. You would sell from above it, and that one was good.
big bull and wasn't violated. So anyway, this thing, uh, last 33, uh, the last 33 trading days, 30 times, this pattern is held three times it was violated. And that's information you can use when you're uh, trading. I know there are several traders in this room that have uh, seen me. I, 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 I camp out in a few Facebook groups, and we throw out the pictures of, you know, a Japanese toast and all that kind of stuff and strudel when the, when the particular strategies uh, come through for us. It's a lot of fun, actually. Okay, I'm going to move to a different market. I'm going to go to the DAX market. And once again, since that market isn't live right now, it's closed. It's going to throw me over to a weekly. But I'll show you how this pattern works at, in the mornings. So these are the hourly charts here. Okay, this, this green candle here. Let me grab my pen again. There's the 7 a.m. candle. It's bullish. Closes out bullish. This this red candle here, this bearish candle here, is 7 a.m. Bearish, bearish. That's good. Okay, this one here was a 7 a.m. candle. The strike price was pretty high. I remember this day. This one was actually good. It it got almost threatened, but it wound up being a winner. I trade this every day. Okay, 7 a.m. Bear. Big giant bear. This was a huge day for, for an out-of-the-money opportunity. I mean, you could have... You could have been hanging down here with $10 risk to make 90 and it would have blown right through it. Okay, 7 a.m. is bullish. Next candle is a doji. That one's fine. That, that one wins. And so forth. Bear, bear. If you pull up the hourly charts and you compare the uh, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. hourly candlestick, You'll be amazed at how frequently this happens. So I'm going to move away from that one, and let's go over to the FTSE one. This is the brunch strategy. Once again, the FTSE market is closed right now, so I'm going to just show you a little bit of that history. FTSE, we're looking from 9 to 11, so... Nine o'clock, bear, bear. That the first day today was was good. Yesterday, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, bear, bear. It's good again. Bull, bull, three in a row. Bull, bull, four in a row. Bull, doji, five in a row. Bear, bear, six in a row, and so forth. So that was six consecutive trading days where the pattern held. You had an opportunity, if you could get into the market, to make a little money. Or if, if you grabbed it out of the money, potentially um, a very nice risk reward. Okay, time for some pastrami. Go to the S&P 500. Let's pull up the weekly on that one, too. Pastrami lost today, I think. Hourly. I'm looking at 11 o'clock to 1. Yeah, this one was really kind of tricky. Um, what did I do on this one? Actually, actually, that one won. 
On dojis, when, when, the, when the first hour develops as a doji, I wait to see what the following hour is going to do. And it was moving down. I didn't get a fill up here. And I don't think, I think I pulled the trigger too late. I didn't get any action on this one, but it, but the pattern did hold up on that one. Oh. Okay, actually the day before, that was a loser. I remember that one losing. Not by much. There was plenty of time to bail. So anyway, on this particular trade, bear, bear, that one's good. Bull, bull, that's good. On this particular trade, what I noticed that is that it still runs close to 90% of the pattern actually happening. So once you have that information, there are things that you can do with it. I'm also looking at a couple of things. I'm not really, I'm still testing, but I've got something that looks like it's repeating, a uh, pattern that looks like it's repeating on gold pretty consistently, and one that I'm kind of starting to like on crude oil. But I'm really not ready to talk about those ones too much. In the afternoon, I use Crystal's uh, Afternoon Delight. In the next 40 minutes or so, I'll be starting to look at the <clears throat> Kanpai Japanese strategy. And one of these days, if Nadex can get a even, a hourly evenings on the uh, Hang Seng, I've, always, I've also picked up a, a pattern on the Chinese market. So with that being said, I really don't have much to trade right now because I'd have to really be about another hour into things. So I'm going to open it up to some uh, final questions. Raphael says, Cam, I checked that today the next five minutes and saw that it goes down bearish like 40 minutes. I'm not sure I understand your question, uh, Raphael. Uh, Richard, it's these are not these um, these trades are all in two-hour periods. So it's uh, when I make the DAX trade, I'm, it's not a daily expiration. The expiration is nine o'clock. Uh, so I'm only interested in the seven a.m. and eight a.m. candlestick on the uh, on the uh, on the DAX. Beyond that, the seven a.m. does doesn't divine what's going to happen for the rest of the day. It can, the markets do what they want to do. They can go up, they can go down. All I just know is that it's it's incredibly consistent with the um, Strudel strategy on the DAX, how often that pattern repeats itself. Same with the FTSE from uh, 9 to 11. Same with the uh, S11 to 1. Same with the Kanpai, the, the J Japan 225 uh, market from 8 to uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, Mike says, thoughts on trading spreads on, on the Nikkei 225 along with the strategy. So, you know, I've, I've kind of looked at that through back testing. It never seems to run very long on me. And, I, and by the time 10 o'clock hits, I'm ready, to hit, I'm ready to hit the sack personally, not babysit a spread. So... I mean, spreads, I've, I've, I've actually noticed, I typically get up like around 5 o'clock, 4.30, 5 o'clock central time. And when I get up at those hours and I kind of, I'm having my coffee, I'm looking at the market, I'm checking the economic calendar and everything else, it's not uncommon to see the DAX make a little bit of a run up or down going into the uh, 7 o'clock hour. And I, and I will take a spread if I see it happening. And then with the Nadex spreads, that resembles more like traditional trading. I'm going to set about a 30 tick or 30 pip target and about a 15, 20 tick stop loss.
Is it possible to demonstrate the order portion of the site? Sure, I'll show you how a um, how a, how a, how a, an order gets placed. Let me uh, let me place a. Let's just do a fun one here. Uh, I'm going to go down to the 15-minute charts. Looks like we have a little MACD crossover right now. This is a weekly chart. It expires on Friday. The market is currently trading the S&P 500 at 2027.750. So, how many... This is this is uh, at the money right now. The sell if you if you bought this it'd be forty five fifty meaning you'd be risking fifty five to make forty five. If you buy it it's fifty three dollars, which means you're risking fifty three to make forty seven dollars. By Friday at at uh, closing bell, will this market go up? Will, will it settle up above? Or below this particular strike price. This is an at the money. Just type an A or B for above or below. Help me make this decision. Above? Anyone else? Below? Above, above, below? Below, above? Gosh, it's about 50 50. Above? I think the aboves have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a buy order. And I'm going to just click on this buy symbol. It's going to pull up an order ticket. Now, when we take a look at an 8x order ticket, here, I'll pop it over here, it's going to give you all the details on this trade. It's, it's going to expire in 20 hours and 32 minutes, which is tomorrow at closing bell. The underlying index is currently at 27, uh, 2027.5. To sell it, the bid price is $46. The offer price is $54.25. So you want to basically, we, we decided we want to buy this. And we want to buy one contract at $54.25. And as soon as I click this, that's going to put me in the market. Or what I could do is say, you know what, I still got 20 hours left to go. I want to place a working order. I don't want to sell for fifty-four twenty-five. I want to sell for. I want to buy this for forty-five dollars. I want to risk. And when and at the bottom of the ticket, you'll always see your maximum loss and your maximum maximum profit. Instead of risking fifty-three to make forty-seven, I'm going to risk forty-five to make fifty-five. I like that better. Now I'm going to place this order, and it's going to become a working order. And under working orders. You'll see this is populated right now. Oops. And it shows that my price is 45. That's what I'm willing to buy it for. The current market's at 54.25. The only way that order is going to fill is if the marketplace drops. It's actually starting to drop a little bit right now. Low enough to 50 to 45 to fill me. If not, it's going to be a no fill. So just for the fun of it, I'm going to click on this ticket. And I'm going to go to 53.50, which is the current market. And now it's going up to 54.25 again. So I'm just going to go to, I'm just going to move above it. I'm going to go to 55. And it'll fill me at the best fill I can get. Okay. This little icon over here went from grayed out to now it's an active uh, order. It shows me that I'm down 825. That's just the bid ask spread on the weekly. As this market continues to grind its way north, this thing will become more valuable. It'll start to go into the profitable area. If it starts to move south on me, uh, it's going to be uh, less valuable. And if I feel the trade is moving away from me, I can just bail and get out of it and take my lumps. And, you know, if I feel that I've taken all the profit I can take off of this and I just want to walk with some money on this, you know, I can always take profit early. Right now we have on the 15-minute charts a, a MACD crossover looking, looks like it's going to be happening. 
Um, let me see if I can lay a couple of other things on here. I'll throw in some stochastics. I like 12.33 personally. Okay. Right now the market is showing on the on 12.33 that the marketplace is um, oversold. So that's a good sign. We have we have all two indicators right now suggesting that this marketplace might that this market might trend up. Let's see how it's doing in relationship to the moving averages. I like to use 20, 50, and 200. It's below the moving averages right now, so it's still riding a downtrend. And Mike asks, can we review what indicators are on the Nadex platform? Yeah, there are a bunch of them. You got the uh, awesome uh, oscillator. You've got you can put Bollinger bands in there if you like um, those. Um, exponential moving averages. I, I prefer the 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 eight myself. Ichimoku cloud. You can see it's trading underneath the cloud. Um, RSI, stochastics, volume, and then there's a bunch of uh, Chaikin analytics. There are of uh, Chaikin volatility. There are a lot of indicators, many that I'm not even familiar with, but it's a pretty good handful. They don't have market profile in there, but you know what? It's not a it's not a bad uh, charting application. Not as robust as Ninja Trader or Thinkorswim or some of the other uh, charting platforms out there, but I think it performs pretty well, especially for these strategies that I've been talking about, which largely really act on price action. I mean, at the end of the day, with 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 the the Japan strategy or the Strudel strategy, all you have to do is just sit back and watch uh, an hourly candlestick develop and make a decision to buy or sell. Is volume available on Forex? Uh, my, my guess, um, you know, Forex there isn't really volume in TradeX, but if you want to see what kind of activity is happening, let me pull up one of those markets. I, I'll show you how to do that in Nadex. Um, I'll pull up the Euro Dollar 11 p.m. And on the Euro dollar 11 p.m., you want to go up here to this little um, chart settings um, icon up here, the little gear thing. And you want to show, you want to take the price from mid to last traded. And then when you do that, what you can do is go back to your um, technical analysis. And click on volume, and basically you'll get the the volume of trading activity on the euro dollar. You can see that it really peaked up around before 12 o'clock, and then there was a little spike around 4 o'clock. But now it's really, really quiet right now. Almost very little activity. By the way, has this been helpful for? For those of people that haven't traded Nadex before, did you learn anything on this? Okay, the big things for me personally on, on Nadex is I love the idea of being in control of a trade, knowing what my what my upside is and what my downside is. Particularly, I'm just one of those people that's risk averse when it comes to losing money. And the idea of you know those disclaimers that you hear with certain other instruments. I mean, this is, by the way, I don't have anything against Nadex. I'm a forex or as futures. You're trading those fine, but what I do like about trading Nadex is the security of knowing that a trade that you can't lose more than your initial investment. 
you know exactly what you're going to be putting up on a trade. Ooh, Mike, can I do a future webinar on charting and compare the Nadex Pro and web version? That's a possibility for the future. Honestly, I took one look at the Nadex Pro platform, and it was just way too busy for me. I really like the simplicity of the web version. Which says, do I have a tendency to buy more than sell? Um, that's a good question. Um, honestly, no. Um, all I care is which way that all I care is that I know the direction of the market, whether it's going to be trending up or whether it's trending down. And if it's trending sideways, I have strategies for that as well. Okay, PW says my demo account with Nadex expired. Is there any way to extend it? Do you did you did you fund a live account or are you still in demo mode? I know, for example, I know that if you fund an, an Adex account with as little as $100, you can call them up and ask them to um, to extend your demo, and they'll extend it out to like a year. So, you know, that gives you a year to play, place one little trade in there, you know, use your best strategy, and and then uh, for the for the for the the balance of the year, I mean. You're good to learn, and then you know find the account until you're at a place where that it's it, where it's in line with your risk of reward. Nancy said she had to make one live trade to get a year demo. That's what I thought. Okay, any final questions? Um, I'm kind of running down to the end of things. I've got a couple things I'll talk about to wrap things up, just to let you know some other resources. Uh, Trading Pub, everything that I write, or almost everything that I write, gets 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 archived up here. And I I typically put out a couple of blog posts on strategies every week on Trading Pub. Um, hang on a second. Let me... <laughs> Okay, so here's where you can open up a uh, a uh, demo account at tradingpub.com slash Nadex. If you fund an account uh, with Nadex, let us know. Send Yana an email at support at tradingpub.com, and she'll give you full access to our Nadex library and resources. Uh, my email address is cam at tradingpub.com. If you have any questions, feel free to fire them, fire them uh, at me. And, um, you know, I'm with Trading Pub, I'm constantly working on Nadex. I'm constantly looking at it through as many, I mean, there are great traders out there with great strategies. And whenever I see anything that I can apply to Nadex, whenever I follow other Nadex traders, um, I like to see, I like to test their strategies and see if it's, whether it suits my risk, uh, my trading style. So with that being said, I think I'm going to wrap it up, unless there are any last-minute questions. Speak now or forever hold your please. Great webinar, because we cannot start in. Okay, yeah, the... Um, Nadex is the platform you want to use for uh, for the for the for the for the uh, Nikkei, for the uh, DAX, and for the FTSE strategies. There are not feeds on uh, Think or Swim for those particular um, for those. And I believe on Ninja, you may have to you may have to pay extra for the for for those data feeds, since you're trading it in Nadex already. The feed is there, and you don't really need a whole lot of indicators to do it. It's it's basically price action. Other places where you can get a feed for the DAX, the FTSE, and the Nikkei would be investing.com. Just make sure that if you pull up investing.com and the charts, that the charts are set to uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Because they may default to your time zone, and if you trade the, the wrong time period, it might look like you're doing the right thing, but you're actually you're off an hour or two. Can you go back to the chart with the compile strategy? Sure. So 
So the first part of the compile strategy, and this deals with everything. It's what I call like a controlling candlestick. You're dealing with the 8 o'clock hourly candlestick and the 9 o'clock hourly candlestick. The trade period is from 8 to 10. You want to watch the development of the first candle. And once it's confirmed bearish, like this first example on the right, then that's going to be your trigger to sell the market. Now you can sell an in the money strike. Where's my pen? Okay, you can. If you sold from right up here, it'd be an in the money strike. You'd probably be risking about 70 to make 30. If you're convinced that this market was going to be bearish and you made a decision right down here and it was at the money, you'd be risking 50 to make 50. And if you're convinced the marketplace is going to be is going to settle um, very bearish, you might be able to get the trade I got yesterday, risking twenty dollars to make eighty. So they're in the money, at the money, and out of the money trading propositions that are available for it. This day here, it was a bullish candlestick. It got taken out. The strike price was right about here. And this bearish candlestick took it off, took it out. That was a loss, and the pattern didn't hold up. So that was one of the three times out of 33 consecutive trading days that it did not fail. The, the, the pattern didn't hold up. This one here was a bearish doji. It kind of watched the next one, the hour. It was all right. I, I took the, I took the sell on this one, and it wasn't violated. Did the upside. The day before, it's a bullish candle that triggers a buy below the candlestick. Your in the money trade was a big was a big winner. At the money might have been threatened. Out of the money, there just was you would have lost if you would have placed a trade down here, hoping that there'd be a market up there. So this was a day for where in the money trades won, but at the money maybe doubtful, and. Um, out of the money, the market just hadn't gone far enough. It came back, so that would have been a loser if you'd taken a live trade in the market. Uh, yes, uh, Natix does take um, debit cards for deposits. They did have trouble a few weeks ago. Uh, I think it's been resolved. Um, or you can also set, you know, you can also. Uh, uh, wire money from your bank account. You just using the uh, information on the checking account uh, on your checking on your checkbook to set up that account. Okay. Well, it's 6:58. We're about two minutes left. If there's any last-minute questions, by the way, did I did I address your question about the uh, the Japan one? Because you can actually. Get ready to start trading that here in about two minutes. Now, just to let you know, what I'm going to do tonight on the on the Nikkei is I'm usually patient for the, about the first half hour to an hour. I'm going to I want to make sure that I'm convinced about the direction. The biggest problem that people make with this particular strategy is pulling the trigger too early. I know it's going to be bearish. The S&P dove. The Nikkei's got to dive. I'm going to sell right now because the first candle was bearish. Well, you know, you could be right. But, you know, um, market the markets can do crazy things. So let's see if I can actually pull up the, the, the Nikkei now. I'm going to have to refresh this. And I have a sneaking feeling that the, uh, the, the Nikkei is going to be a big, giant bear because it's, like whenever Wall Street sneezes and the Nikkei catches a cold. Well, let's take a look. Ah, here we are. It's up and live and ready for going. <clears throat> up from the, from ready for trading. So, come on, baby. Load up. Haha, <laughs> look at that big bear over there. Okay. This is the... It always opens up uh, 15 minutes ahead of us. The first 15 minutes of trading before the uh, 8 o'clock candle, already a big bear 
on a lot of volume. So, um, wouldn't be surprised to see this thing bearish, but, you know, we just want to let this thing play itself out for about an hour or so. Right now, if I were to, right now, if I were convinced it were bearish, I would be selling at the 19.670. Current uh, market price would be uh, risking, oh, about 80 to make 20. And it's going to keep on going. In fact, this is going to be a great opportunity for me to just jump in demo. And I think it's going to just, I've just got a feeling. So I'll just, I'm going to jump down here and I'm going to take it out of the money. Because I'm feeling frisky. Okay. So I risked um, not much, about $15. And this marketplace, within the next hour and 50 minutes, 58 minutes, is going to need to get from where it is right now. It's going to need to settle. It's going to need to make it. To right there it's gonna to have to settle below this line so it's gonna need to jump a few pips but you know this is just a demo trade I wanted to show you how an out-of-the-money trade would be placed on that if I were convinced that this bar were gonna be bearish I mean I mean um, bearish and I wanted to place an at-the-money trade then what I would do is I would sell Mm, it's probably, oops, no, I don't want to buy. I want to sell. If I was convinced it was bearish. I'd sell right now if I wanted to place an at the money. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this a working order. I'm going to buy one contract at, at, at risking 50 to make 50. That's the true definition of, an, uh, of, of a working order. Um, so I got that one. I felt really quick on me, though. I probably hit the wrong strike price. That's exactly what I did. Here's how you cancel an order. <laughs> Let me get out of that one quick. That'll close out in a second. Anyway, I, can, I would sell. Do a working order to sell right up here. Just need 50 to make 50. And if I wanted an in the money, I would be trading way up here and staying on the side of the tr uh, of the trade if I thought it was going to be bearish. But look at it. 15 minutes came down hard. It's going bullish. So this is why it's important to stay patient and just let that candlestick develop. Okay, I'm about three minutes past. Um, any final questions? How often do you need to refresh Nadex? I, in the morning, if I, it's usually every couple of hours or so because I need, it'll, I'll need to refresh some time frames. You'll know it if the instrument you want to trade is not available. And then you just refresh, and all of a sudden, it's very available. All right, folks. Well, I'm going to close it out while you watch. Now the market's coming back down. You can see this might actually turn blue here in a second. That'd be beautiful. Anyway, I'm going to call it a night. But thank you so much for hanging out with me and uh, watching uh, me talk about uh, Nadex trading strategies. <laughs>